All right, so what we've got here is a master class from Jim Acosta. Yeah, the guy who made a name for himself as CNN's White House correspondent during the Trump years. If you remember, he went viral a bunch of times for fact-checking Trump, getting into it with him, and even getting insulted by Trump on more than one occasion. Eventually, CNN gave him his own show, which, honestly, he totally earned. On the other side, we've got Corey Lewandowski, a top Trump advisor we've talked about before. He's pretty combative and controversial. Back in 2016, his whole motto was, let Trump be Trump, which basically means letting Trump follow whatever wild instincts or nasty impulses he has, no filter. That's probably why Trump brought him back for the 2024 campaign. He doesn't want the polished advice from guys like Chris LaCivita. He just wants to hear, do whatever the hell you want. And that's exactly Lewandowski's vibe. So what we've got here is like the classic unstoppable force meets immovable object situation. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But seriously, Jim Acosta's performance here is next level. We're going to check out these clips and break them down together. Let's get right into this. Uh, last night, Senator Vance refused to answer whether Trump lost the 2020 election. Let's listen to that. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. Yeah, Corey, why is this so difficult for the Trump campaign to answer? I mean, it's 2024. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Can you answer that? Jim, I think it's very simple. The American people have passed the 2020 election. They're focused on an election which is just under five weeks away. And what we have, we have an opportunity to do now is to talk about two different visions for America. And what J.D. Vance laid out last night is a very different vision than what Tim Walls and Kamala Harris want to say. So, look, we can go back and relitigate the 2020 election, or we can look at what we can do to make America better for the everyday Americans who are struggling under Bidenomics. Yeah, They're struggling Corey, under... It's not, yeah, <clears throat> it's not relitigating. It's just, it's just a simple question. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election. I mean, that's, that's yeah, but Jim, easy... Jim, why are we talking about 2020 anymore? Does the American people care about the 2020 election anymore? Or do they care about being able to put food on their table, gas well, in their car, I home, think one reason why their... it's coming up, Corey, is because uh, the former president has said on the campaign trail repeatedly uh, that there was all this widespread fraud in 2020. That was not the case. And he's also uh, teeing up the same kinds of challenges after this election. It hasn't even happened yet. So it, it is a very well, Jim, Jim question. we know there was fraud. There's no question there was some fraud that took place in the 2020 election. There's no, no question about that. No widespread fraud. No well, widespread what, what fraud. What does widespread mean, Jim? Is, is, yeah. is one vote that's illegal yeah. enough? Or is how many do you determine is widespread? What is that number? There are instances of voter fraud from Trump supporters. I mean, you know that from the 2020 campaign. But And, and I, you're saying there was I, none I on the, the other side, Jim? Is, I mean, I'm sure there was, but Corey, I mean, every, every expert, people from inside the Trump administration who have come out since then have said, no, no widespread voter fraud. And but I guess what the does question widespread is, mean, Jim? Why Corey, are we focusing on 2024 is my question. Okay, so Corey, I guess, Corey, so I guess what you're saying is, is that Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 election. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is Joe Biden is the president of the United States. You recognize that and I recognize that. But What Acosta did here was pretty clever. He basically turned the whole voter fraud narrative against Lewandowski. The truth is, we've actually verified cases of Trump supporters committing voter fraud in 2020. So it's perfect to throw it back at them like, hey, if you're so worried about fraud, why not start with your own people? Of course, Lewandowski had no real comeback other than the tired, well, I'm sure Democrats committed fraud too. And maybe they did. But the real question is, was there enough voter fraud in 2020 to actually change the election outcome? And the answer, over and over again, is no. In fact, the recounts and forensic audits in multiple states didn't just confirm Biden's win, they actually increased his margin. Think about that. Every time there was a recount, more votes went to Biden, not Trump. The 2020 election was free and fair. And this idea that we can just question results because of some fraud happening? Well, by that logic, we should have been questioning every single election, including 2016. It's not like no fraud ever happened in 2016, 2012, or even 2008. Voter fraud exists in every election, in every democracy around the world. The real question is, did it change the outcome? And in 2020, absolutely not. If we follow the logic of Trump supporters, then Hillary Clinton should have done the same thing in 2016 
sued her way into the White House, or worked with Biden and Obama to steal the election from Trump. But of course, they would have never accepted that. This is where MAGA Republicans lose every time. They have no principles. Even if we grant them their argument, they'd never be okay with a Democrat pulling the same stunt. That's how you know they're hypocrites, plain and simple. And honestly, they deserve to be called out and ridiculed for it. Stay tuned for more. This version keeps the same sharpness, but brings in that everyday conversational tone. 2024 election, which is less than five weeks away, and let's look at the two visions for America. Will Donald Trump? Will have. Donald Trump honor the results of the 2024 election? Will he do that? Jim, did 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 Hillary Clinton honor the results? No. Did Democrats? Honor yes, the she results? did. She called she and conceded not. the she election. Corey, Jim, I was with true. you guys on, on election night in, in Manhattan. She said the in election was stolen. She said there was Russian interference. She, she called, Members of this she network called said the that the Steele dossier she was called true. The, she called the then president elect and conceded the election. Jim, that why is what are we she talking did. hypotheticals? Why are you know we talking that. about the policy matters that matter to the American people? The I know, but Corey, the, it's a simple question. Across this country. Will the former Jim, why president. Are we talking about it's honestly hilarious how Lowski keeps trying to pull the Hillary Clinton card. Luckily, Jim Acosta just nailed it. Remember when Hillary called Donald Trump to congratulate him after he won? She actually conceded the election in a press conference right after that. I mean, she handled that whole situation with way more class and integrity than Trump ever did. Let's be real. Trump, as the sitting president, had a bigger responsibility to accept the results of a fair election than Hillary, who was just a private citizen at that point. But guess what? She did the right thing, and he completely dropped the ball. I love bringing this up with MAGA supporters because their stance on this is just so ridiculous. They can't win this argument no matter how they spin it, and it's just too easy to point that out. It's a blast. Immigration. All right, last night, J.D. Vance said immigrants have, quote, destroyed Americans' lives in Springfield uh, before <laughs> having his mic cut. Um, but all of this got started when Trump falsely claimed at last month's debate that Haitian migrants were eating pets. Uh, the governor of Ohio, the mayor of Springfield, have both come out and said this is not true. Corey, can you say that Haitian migrants are not eating pets in Springfield? Can you say you know that? What I, you know what I can say, Jim? I can say that 13,099 murderers were led into this country, 16,000 rapists, 425,000 people in the last four years have been led into this country by, by Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's own Customs and Border Protection that are yeah, running Corey, around this country, Jim. The other thing, too, it's Kamala Harris. Crimes. I don't know. Is there, why do you guys say Kamala? That is, it's, it's Kamala Harris. I just... Jim, I, we know yeah. that they're committing crimes against yeah. Americans. Why, why can't these individuals... Are, all right, let's take a quick pause here. We've talked about this in a previous video, but Lowski is totally lying, just like many MAGA Republicans tend to do. So this, this 13,999 number he keeps throwing around, it's misleading. A lot of folks on that list came to this country generations ago, and some of them are serving life sentences. They're on ICE's non-detained list because they aren't locked up anymore. Plus, many left prison ages ago, but can't be deported. When Lowski claims that 13,000 migrants who committed homicide have been let in under the Biden-Harris administration, that's just a flat-out lie. In fact, many of those people entered the country during the Trump era under his leadership. So it's pretty obvious he's just trying to demonize immigrants and scare people. Here's the kicker. The Trump administration actually has a worse track record on this issue than Biden and Harris do. There was a 10% increase in these kinds of cases during Trump's time compared to a 5% increase under Biden. So they're just wrong about the facts. And don't even get me started on the outrageous bigotry they're pushing. They're not only lying about these numbers, but they're also spreading wild conspiracy theories. Like the one about Haitian migrants eating cats and dogs, which has even led to bomb threats in Springfield, Ohio. It's just ridiculous. Killed by illegal immigrants. 13,099 murderers have been led yeah. into this country by this administration's own accounting, and you guys don't want to talk about it. To put that in perspective, Corey, we talk for your about viewers, immigration all the time. Yeah, we but, talk but about this all the time. Jim, Jim admit that 13,099 murders yeah. have been led into this country. That's Corey. four murderers for every single county okay. in America. But, you don't think that Corey. that's a problem? Border crossings are down and crime is down in this country. But you know, crime is I, not I do down in this country. I, the FBI. I asked lied, you at the beginning Jimmy, of this interview, that. did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? I just asked you whether uh, Haitian migrants are eating dogs and cats in Springfield. You went. You won't admit the truth on either of those questions. I Jim, want to ask you, you about something. 
So once again, Corey Lowski is just straight up lying. The FBI crime stats cover about 94% of the U.S. population. They pull together data from all sorts of sources, including local law enforcement, so it's pretty comprehensive. The reality is that violent crime is down in this country, and that's a fact. Republicans have no real evidence to back up their claims, just their feelings. And let's be real, facts don't care about your feelings, as Ben Shapiro would say.